G'day guys, quick uh, update here. A pretty quiet week. Jeremy's taken a bit of a break, so animation wise, haven't been able to do much, unfortunately. And uh, I've also had some personal errands thrown, which are, well, personal, so I'm not going to go into them. Uh, we did work on packaging a bit. We're hoping to get a bit of an internal release going, and uh, it's important to take the 20 something gig of uh, development stuff we've got and get it to a more manageable size. Thankfully, we managed to get down to about three and a half, so we should be taking care of that soon enough. Uh, we did add some patch support. Um, that's the little things you can see here on his arms. It ain't perfect, but uh, it is getting there. It mirrors at the moment, which is uh, actually how it's supposed to do it for flags, but. Uh, Unfortunately, for this kind of joke one I've done here, it reverses it on the left arm. Also, for some reason, it turned up on his back, but that's just because I'm using the same you know, material for the vest there, and it shouldn't be. But uh, anyway, so as you can see, they're pretty easy to make. I mean, this, I just threw that crappy one together in a few minutes. But uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, also, cleaned up and redid a whole bunch of the penetration code. I'm pretty happy with that. I've turned on the debug trails for the bullets and slowed them right down for this next test. It um, bases all the penetration on the actual caliber of the bullet or bullet class, whatever you want to call it, uh, as well as the material struck. It's individual. It also takes into account the ricochets, uh, which are more likely if on a shallow angle than a steep one. So I shoot through here. <laughs> And wait for a second, there they go. Unfortunately, uh, I haven't actually stopped them yet, so if I just follow the bullets, they'll just keep going. Which is kind of funny, because if you shoot the map, <laughs> and especially with the ricochets, they go everywhere. But it's interesting, it's actually rather simple how they work now. Quite proud of them. And I'm not sure if they'll stop or keep going. Probably keep going. As I said, a little ridiculous. Uh, no bullet should actually do that, but uh, still a bit of fun. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, John's been up to some more work as well involving shaders, but I'll let him explain that. Hello everyone, it's John here. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these as I've kind of let Chris take, uh, take over the reins for a little bit. Um, sorry that I don't have the sweet, smooth, sultry tone that he does, but... Uh, you're just going to have to make do right now. Um, I wanted to show you a little something that uh, we've been working on. It's called physically based rendering. Um, it's kind of a new thing in uh, real-time game graphics, I guess. A lot of the modern engines are uh, using it now. Um, it's, it's a more uh, mathematical representation of lighting instead of a, a more artistic kind of faked uh, approach and I think that um, you can see that uh, on this M4 here that uh, it's a more accurate and realistic portrayal um, right now I'm in Max uh, 3D Studio Max and not the editor we're still working on the shader implementation in the editor but uh, we have a neat little tool in Max that we can actually uh, get the shader that will be used in the engine uh, in the material editor and the viewport. So what you see here in Max is what you will see uh, in the editor um, in the not too distant future. Um, so we do a lot of testing and uh, experimentation here with the, uh, the texture maps because this type of rendering does require the uh, textures to be made a little bit differently as I'll show you here. Uh, this is your typical diffuse texture which is the color but something that's different from uh, last gen or normal I guess uh, techniques are the specularity. Um, this time around uh, physically based lighting has to deal with the, uh, the glossiness or the reflectiveness of a surface as well as the roughness and Think of uh, something like a highly polished metal that has almost no roughness whatsoever. It's very smooth and very reflective. Something like a plastic is uh, the reflections are, are scattered. Uh, they're very small um, light reflections, if any, and it's almost a very blurred uh, rough effect, and that's where the term roughness comes in. 
And this particular map here, uh, which is still called the specularity, uh, defines the roughness. A dark value um, represents something that's, that's more rough or uh, a flatter reflectance like a plastic. And a lighter value here is a more polished or uh, highly higher reflectivity um, or a smoother surface. And this really comes down to helping out with um, the uh, defining metal properties of materials um, a lot better than we could in the past. This value here is the gloss map. And as you can see, it's very bright. Darker areas represent something that is uh, more shiny, and lighter areas represent something that is less shiny. So some areas that have uh, more scratches or that are rubbed, um, rubbed off or rubbed down may, re uh, may reflect a little bit uh, differently than uh, a smoother surface does. So back here in, inside of Max, I'll just point out a few quick things here. Um, as you can see at the front of the receiver, about here, you can see how it uh, the light actually reflects it, uh, almost like it's scuffed uh, from where somebody would be holding holding the receiver there. Likewise, along the back, you can see uh, a little bit more wear. Um, this type of, of rendering really does help sell metallic surfaces and plastic surfaces, but it's also really good with uh, just general environmental surfaces as well. And we're going to get into a, uh, a more detailed explanation of what it is that is actually going on and um, kind of the differences of, of what maybe most people are used to seeing. Um, however, uh, this is not the time nor the place, but if you want to do a little bit of research on it, um, it is physically based rendering or PBR. Until next time.